So uh, good morning and good evening to some. And thank you for joining us on this week's, you know, what we call as Harmony Circle, a circle of harmony. So uh, Deepa is joining us for the first time. So just for her, Deepa, I'll just say that, you know, this is an initiative by Living Life. And my name is Taru. And um, so thank you for joining in. And, you know, the purpose of this was that, you know, how when we live our lives, we are just living, right? Like just running in a different direction, not knowing why we run, doing a lot of things just mechanically, right? Doing things, we knowing that everybody does them or that's the only way. And yet when we stop and think or question, there are a lot other ways in which things can be done, right? It's just that we don't think for ourselves most of the time. So just harmony circle is like, you know, pause in time in which we, we just pause and we just see that, you know, how say if somebody enters a house and there are so many windows to look out of, you know, one person could be standing at the back window and looking at a dumpster. The other person could be looking at the front window and looking at, you know, a beautiful mountain view. And for each person, that would be the truth of the view, right? But that doesn't mean that's the only view. So we, when we meet and we reflect together, you know, we see different views out of the same house. And it's a lot of time very expanding. So that was the reason why we kind of started meeting and, you know, reflecting on things that come to us. So thank you for joining in. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. So uh, good morning, Rashmi. I was just, uh, you know, welcoming Deepa. She too has joined for the first time today. And uh, so, yeah. So before we begin, if we could just, you know, maybe take two minutes to ingather ourselves. You know, usually we are so scattered everywhere, like although the body is at the one place, but, you know, our minds are at so many different places that we are just all over. So just taking a few breaths in mindfulness, just taking the next few breaths and staying with the breath. To just be fully here, open to anything new that might come our way through discussions and sharing that can help us live light. So yeah, just a few breaths we'll take. Thank you. So the topic that uh, we decided for today was emptying the cup. And before I begin, I want to say that this is a circle. So there is no you know, speaker, there is no attendance, attendee. So if anything, at any time, any time we want to share anything, comment, reflect on anything, one is more you know, welcome to just unmute, wait for the person who's speaking and let them finish and then please share. Yeah, so I was saying that the topic for today is emptying my cup. And before we go into it, if I could just, you know, request in general to just share, you know, what is my cup according to me? What is the significance or what is emptying? You know, why are we not able to empty? So just simple things like this, if we can, just casual statements. Morning in progress. progress, 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 progress. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. So, yeah. So anything that's coming to us at uh, just the topic, just the title, if we can begin with the personal 
I don't know, reflection or thoughts on what did it mean to me when I saw the topic. Anybody who is willing to share is welcome. Can I go? Yes, Nandini, please. Yeah, so this topic um, really resonated with me because that's something I was really um, kind of reflecting in last week or two weeks or so. Partly because um, when you're away from home, you make friends and, you know, you make people who are closer to you that you can associate with. But you keep evolving, you keep growing, right? And... Um, you know, for example, I have really good family friends. I stayed with here for three years when I came here and they were like, they are like a family, like a sister to me and really nice. So especially these days when sometimes I really feel alone. So I go spend my time with them. But um, sometimes because I feel that I have grown as a person, maybe in last two years, how I was last two years, I'm not anymore like this. Um, sometimes I go there thinking that I'm going there to fill my cup, um, you know, the cup uh, of maybe belonging, of love, of, you know, uh, somebody will ask you food, somebody will talk to you and all of that. But there's a lot of um, chit chat, you know, uh, to belong in a group uh, of people, you sometimes have to associate with them. And that's why we say company is so important, especially in yoga, we talk about it. But it's not that they're bad people or, you know, nobody's a bad person. But, you know, like in the sense that it's not that that we talk really um, things which are of no consequence. But they're also not things that, that we say now, you, that makes you grow, that teaches you something, that has value to it. We talk about this and that and just mundane things. And when I came back from my home, I came back, usually I stay. I didn't feel like staying and I'm good. I, I'm happy that I really listened to my gut. And I came back. I just felt, oh, I don't feel really light in my consciousness. I don't really feel, you know, uh, vast or I don't feel happy because usually before sleeping, I reflect on the day and I think, oh, what is what I have done today, um, you know, that has helped me move forward. You know, what is it? Maybe a discussion, maybe an act, maybe something of my hobby. And I just didn't uh, feel, I said, too much waste and a waste of energy. Whole day I kept chatting away about this, not this thing, about that person, about that person. And how how was it that I was not conscious about it at all? And now only I'm being conscious. Although I feel, oh, I'm, you know, I'm doing this, I'm reading this, I'm reading Savitri, I'm doing the classes. And it just didn't, I didn't even think about mother even for a single time whole day, maybe just here and there. I didn't feel happy. So I said that, what is the alternative? Like, how do I fill my cup? Because I have few people, but they are online with whom, you know, now I associate with. There's nothing, no, like not many people who are in person with me. And that is something that I thought maybe, you know, I would discuss that, that what is the alternative? And when you do not have, like you need people, it's like, at least in the beginning. And, but you don't feel that they are, you know, with, with, with them, you can really fill your cup. Then what do you do with your cup? Where do you go? So I just thought of just sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Nandini. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Jacqueline. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. You know, when uh, Nandini was sharing this, I remember in one of the sessions I was talking about how, you know, in Tare Zameen Par Ishan Avasti, he's in the class, he's listening to the class, and alphabets are flying out of his head. And I was in situations where I don't know why I was, I just kept bantering. They were, my friends were bantering and I felt, it really felt like everything was flying out of my head. And when I was heading back home, I could see that I have nothing in my head. Like I am, you know, I'm tired out of doing nothing and just talking. Like I've never been so tired out of working, but with just by talking, I was really tired. So to coming to your question on what is filling my cup. So growing up, I've always tried to take my own, you know, own decisions, and that ended ended up in doing a lot of mistakes. What 
my mindset was such that i i thought that you know i shouldn't do a mistake in the first place and that what happened is i started taking opinion opinions and the problem is when i met x number of people they had x number of opinions it's not like everyone gave me the same opinion and so i filled myself with so many opinions and so many things that i actually forgot what i really wanted in the end you know, even if it's bad or even if it's good i i just did not i was not prepared for the experience that i would have given myself so my cup at the at that point of time and even today is somewhat filled with opinions and i would really want that to be empty at one point yeah thank you so that's a very important uh, point you said that to reflect on again what my cup is full of right and like you said mine is full of opinion so just to even know like you know what i call as my thought that okay this is what i believe this is what i think this is how things should be done they are no you know mostly uh, j krishna murthy you know jk as a lot of people call him a very great philosopher who has written several books he speaks about that what i call as mine right or i there's nothing i or personal in it it's a lot of just conditionings right we wake up we see how people are doing things we are growing up and we just keep following what everybody is doing and we have these preconceived notions these images from movies hollywood bollywood we look at you know profiles or stuff on dps on facebook and we say oh, wow you know he's living the life or she is living the life having and that might be have like zero connection to their truth and yet i would feel that oh i too want to be that so just knowing i think what i am full of right now what what impacts me what you know shapes me i feel is a beautiful thing to start so that at least i know that the things that i hold on to and i'm ready to fight and shout and scream are mujhe kaise bol diya right like how dare you say this to me and i will tell you how to do this so if we can just know that a lot of what i do is just gathered from here and there and is sort really mine that helps me in having that lightness so that i can be open and a little more flexible and let go yeah hi ritu hi hema welcome yeah hi so just to recap for the people who have joined late uh, the topic today like we know is emptying my cup so i was just asking us to reflect a little bit a sentence or two if you want to share on what does this mean to me what is my cup why do i need to empty it do i need to empty it and what what is it full of according to me like why are we having this conversation what attracted us yeah yeah so if i talk about myself it's a very very sad situation because my cup is so full of such unnecessary and trivial things that i try to empty it but the more i try to empty it i start getting more thoughts of the past this person did this that person did that 20 years back somebody was rude to me so if today that person comes in front of me the same rudeness comes in front of me and for a while let's say i decide not to go into the past so for some time it is okay i might not go into the past but then the end of the day i'm again into the same thing past and future worrying about the future so i think it's always full of past and future and i would say when i talk about past it's about um um maybe anger or dislike for people and if it's about future it's about a little bit of worry so now the worry is becoming lesser and lesser earlier the worry was a lot like i would 
always keep worrying what's going to happen if this happens or that happens but now that is settling down a little bit but still the past memories and the things which i hold on to so strongly in my heart i don't want to do that but it i'm not able to let go of it yeah. and you know like it's everybody's story right like you say my story is very sad and the truth is we are more similar than we realize we might not admit it we might not talk about it but like rumi says right every story is us so we all very strongly i would say i assume are resonating with what you said and i think knowing this also is great like i was you know sharing with jagan that to know that okay you know i am stuck and this 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 is where i am stuck seems like the first step that would help me in trying to become unstuck right like okay somebody said something to me 20 years back or 2 years back or 2 months back even 2 hours back we could take it up depending on you know how much we like to stick to things and i'm still holding on when i'm looking at that person i'm feeling some kind of you know like repulsion at times or you know that anger arises which has no bearance to the present it was said done with the person might not even remember or they might not have even intended to say it you know with that feeling or with that intention and i heard something and i caught on to it so i i don't know it's like if i would hear somebody else do it i would smile that oh my god you know like oh really you're still there or you know does it have any i don't know thing with the truth any relation and yet i find myself incapable of living light right of living that in the present that okay you know at times i get angry or i might be upset about somebody else or something else and i just say things but when i do it i give myself a lot of room right that oh i said it oh i didn't mean it oh you know whatever but i must give the same space or you know the same flexibility to others and the other thing is that if i am holding on to something i am being unkind to nobody else more than myself right every time if i am looking at something or when you know when i experience thing are living themselves i don't live when i have to uh, yes deepa thank you for joining yeah so um, yeah so every time i am reliving these things i'm just being unkind to myself because i'm not living in the present i'm just live, the past is living itself deepak before you leave would you like to i don't know uh, i if do you have anything to share or comment you can go ahead i can't uh, hear you okay um, is it better now a little bit better but it's very very soft Yeah. Okay. Let me just take it out. See what you can hear. Better now? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Now it's great. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry to interrupt the talk. Um I was loving every bit of what you were talking. So, I'm okay to be a a listener. Okay. Um but just because I'm new to the group, um maybe I could just uh share a little bit. Um I think uh from whatever I've heard of everybody um as you said a little bit of everything resonates with me with what um all the speakers have said so far um whether it is about uh, the cup being full for nandini or um, uh, jagan uh, mentioning about how his cup was full and nandini mentioning how she wanted her cup full at times um and uh, when uh, the more recent speaker said that uh, we hold on to some negative thoughts and when you also say about about forgiving and how that actually impacts us more than the other person all of it resonates with me and it's a similar story and yet so dissimilar for me in so many aspects um 
I've been new to Canada and um, uh, in spite of the fact that I've been out of um, India for the last 20 years, but my experience when I first moved out of India versus first coming to Canada is so different today. Um, I think when I first moved out of India, my cup was so full with emotions because um, I think um, my heart was full. Um, I um, was missing everybody and I wanted everybody around me and there wasn't anybody around me. Um, but today, I think it's maturity or the fact that you've seen life for so long. Um, you're happy to be alone as well. Uh, you're happy to reflect. And I think when you meet someone, um, you are more accommodating, you're more forgiving. And that is, I don't know how the other person perceives me. And I think it's, to some extent, it doesn't concern me. But um, what I like is there is a better me. Um, I'm able to let go of memories that may not be pleasant because I think I, I might sleep better, I might interact better, and um, I have more fruitful and healthy conversations. That's all I can say. I mean, if that helps anyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. You know, this ability to let go when we see something that is not helping us anymore, or maybe never helped us. We just heard something or perceived something and sat on it. And how it's been, you know, it's like it erodes us from inside and just instill negativity or unkindness. It's so liberating when we are able to just let go. And once we let go, we often wonder that how was I even ever able to hold on to something, you know, it's yeah, it's so nice to transcend one's own limits or you know, baggages and move ahead. Yeah, anybody else like Hema, Rashmi, Snehi, in case anything you would want to share on what is my cup and what is emptying, what does emptying mean for me? In case you feel like sharing, you can unmute, no pressure. But if not, we'll just continue. Okay, so the origin, you know, the official origin of this saying that emptying my cup, you know, it has a Zen origin, which is more popular. So the story goes that there was this scholar who went to, you know, a very big Zen master and he said, I want to learn about Zen. And the master said, okay. And he said, okay, but first you tell me about what you know, you know, just in basic interactions. He told that person who had come to the Zen center and he just kept going on and on and on and on and stuff. So master said, okay. So then the master called somebody to get tea. So they got tea and cups were placed in front of them both and master picked up the teacup and he started pouring and he kept on pouring and the tea started spilling first, you know, in the saucer, then outside, then on the table, then on the floor. And then the person just, you know, started shouting that, what are you doing? You know, why don't you stop? The cup is already full. And then the master smiled and he stopped and he said that exactly, like for something to enter us, there has to be space, right? But if you are already so full, how will anything new enter you? So first, empty your cup. You know, I think it was Osho who said that the cup is useful only because it's empty. Right? If a cup is full, it's of no use to me. So I think this is also an important thing to reflect on that what is my cup full of? Lot of times we hear things, you know, and I say that Mujhe to pata hi hai. I already know, right? I know what is this, I know this, I know that, I know how life works, I know what I want. And there might not be an ounce of truth 
in what i see i know or there might be a very limited aspect that i am seeing and i am missing out so much when i say i know i feel especially you know with children when we are looking at them or interacting them we we know okay this is safe this is unsafe this is how you do it this is how you paint this is how you draw we never see that okay you know let me see how they want to do it and at times if we are able to do that the creativity the spontaneity the beauty in what they do and what they share is pretty amazing i remember once there was this long long time back there was this thing on tv during that time and they said they were talking about creativity so they t- took a white sheet of paper and they drew a small dot in the center and they a- kept asking people what this was so all the adults you know they just said it's a black dot somebody said it's a white paper with a black dot black dot with a white paper whatever whatever and then they started asking kids and the answers were so beautiful you know one kid said it's a burnt hamburger the other said it's my you know mama's bun the third said it's like you know as coal on my face like really in the sense they could just see a dot and think of so much so just knowing that what i know is usually not empowering me which i think it is it's usually limiting me and i think we all associate more when you know it's like when we were students we would always want to know more right we would say okay teach me tell me how to do that or i want to learn about this 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 and that because we knew that i need to learn or i want to learn but we don't realize when that i want to learn to i already know because it sounds smart right it sounds that by now i should know but my thing that i feel is making me look smart mostly that you know i am already very solid and appearing very standing on my feet but i myself am limiting my scopes my growth because i say i already know mujhe pata hai wo kaisa hai mujhe pata hai wahan pe ja ke kya hota hai mujhe pata hai kind of thing so i not only not you know you and that's the reason why we feel life is monotonous right why is everything just the same why is new not happening so i guess that is part of the reason yeah i re- <clears throat> something um, really opened up when you talked about this because i was reflecting it a um, few months ago on this um, about knowing you know and how certain we are that we know and part of the problems that we have with other people is when they kind of break into this break this understanding of oh i know it so well and you know they would tell something which is so contrary to this knowing or would be like oh my god you know how did this happen and i remember last year my mother in law um told you know like something that deeply hurt me um, and she said that i am you know i'm not good at cleaning you know and i'm lazy and i'm not cleaning and i got to know from my partner that she said it and oh my god it was so because i always had this belief that i get along with everybody so well so how can somebody pick out i cook so well i do this you know and for two months it was such a big scar that was left on my heart and um, i don't know unconsciously after that i was so particular about things being dirty and cleaning is in a certain way um and i remember some a guest came um like two months ago and when they came and when they sat down after that he said my god your way of serving way your way of keeping the room and the you know the living room is so different and i didn't really understand she said everything looks really beautiful and looked after and when they left i said i when i reflected on it i kind of realized that how much that comment that gave me so much hurt and resentment and this idea that i know how things can be done 
and because it was kind of knocked down and hammered down so brutally as well you know i and i i i would think it's better to kind of tell somebody gently you know way of teaching but sometimes universe can actually bring such tight slaps to make you evolve as well because sometimes my mother was always doing you know do things properly do things properly but for 28 years i did not never bother of doing things and that one comment which which brought so much hurt into this idea of i know how to do things it it really helped me improve so i mean and and it has also changed my relationship with her as well that i that i say okay and i sometimes even say thank you thank you for being so harsh had it not come i wouldn't have really you know it wouldn't have perfected me so in that sense so i mean like that thing i i picked up from there when you said about this that that we are so certain about we know how things can be you know what will happen if we'll go there that we don't even allow that space to be created in our life where if evolution can take place because we are closing it off by our limited understanding and this yeah so thank you sandini thank you for sharing you know it is said that the life the universe the cosmos is always trying to teach us right like we are here to learn we are here to evolve we are here to grow but anything happens or something happens we just take it on ourselves and just brood right like for you say that hurt or that brooding may be lasted a few months and then you realize that how it helped you for others it could last years right that i just you know i something happens i get a tight slap for example and i say oh my god it hurt it hurt it hurt it hurts and but then i was then i'm like okay oh this was what you were trying to teach me but because i feel so one with that slap and i got slapped so mental hurt physical hurt emotional hurt that i don't even see what was my lesson in that situation i get so boggled down on me right mere sath what has happened to me and i don't look at what happened and where is did it intend to take me so a lot of times we see that at times you know that the same thing keeps happening to us under different phases and different situations but it's like the same it's like a lot of times we read that okay you know i've got divorced three times for example and fourth time again you know the person is like this and for example so we don't see that i am attracting the same things because i refuse to learn the lesson and when we turn within when we see that okay why is this happening to me what am i doing at times there is some opening and something changes yeah that was a extreme example but yeah yeah so anything else anything from anyone Now you know I always found it so easy to to say mind to tell myself that you know keep an open mind keep an open mind so much so that I had a placard in my previous office where I would see it every day and I would never never follow it like you know I would be like oh this is what it is this is what it is and the situation comes and I'm like मेरे से बोला ऐसे ऐसे कैसे कर सकते हैं every every time so um, so the mom a question as i keep let's say i'm going to face a situation where i'm going to be confronted about something that the other person thinks i don't know so and and this is sort of unexpected so i'm not prepared for this so how, what should be my mindset that i listen to him or listen to her and not react but rather just you know save that information for later to analyze
Yeah, Jagan, I think you would know that answer, right? You're yourself saying that save that information later for answer, right? So you yourself yeah. are answering your question that I'm so eager to respond, right? Like basically, if we talk about listening, you know, listening is a skill. But basically, we are whenever we listen to people or things, when we are hearing something, we the person has not even completed most of the time, and my mind starts saying that, oh, this is what I can say on this, or this is where he must be stuck. Oh, wait, wait, wait! I have understood. Let me tell you, right? So we don't really listen. We are just preparing to talk. So I guess we all love to be heard right like again i'm just using the example of children that if say i am on my phone and my child is saying something and i'm like yeah 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 my son rio my son rio and he will, he will be like no aap mere ko dekho right like look at me when I, kind of and then we are like oh yeah yeah sorry sorry type and at times not but listening when you feel heard when somebody is there when you feel heard that in itself is very therapeutic that in itself carries some value i remember you know people uh, somebody had shared i think it was uh, jetstone mila tenzin pamo who had shared that you know dalai lama you know the way he listens to you he says that you know people come to him you know sobbing with sad stories this happened that happened and he's when he's listening to you you feel that 100% of his attention is with you and he's sharing something and you know they are sharing something and he will cry with them oh this happened this happened and then after maybe few moments you will see all of them laughing like you know how he just turned that situation and it was so healing for the person just to be heard so i think we must develop this capacity we all feel we are important we all believe our lives are special so if my life is special my opinion is special so is everybody else's right and if he is taking out the time to comment on something maybe it hurts me that you know what go- goes of your father agar main aisa karta hu to or whatever right like we can use any sentence but you know again uh, i think it was a mother uh, you know she says that if somebody says something to you for, when you receive it first reflect on it that is that true do i do that and if the answer is yes then you know acknowledge it and do something if possible to change that attitude if you didn't realize and now somebody has told you and if you see that it's not true that they just it's a misunderstanding or that their own perception or you like being w- how you are you can just let go you can just the person said something say if somebody is offering me food and if i don't want it either i'll say no thank you i'm not hungry or i just take it and i might give it to somebody else or i might just put it aside right i will not just go and start throwing it on their faces how dare you offer me food i didn't ask for it right but somehow our defenses stand up right we feel by you know how we are like how could they say this to me because i have an image of me that i do things right i am trying and we are all trying and yet you know thanking somebody i mean actually when people point out our faults or they tell us that this needs to be done better our reaction is not of gratitude ever we are always taking things personally and saying that no 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 and i would say it's everybody's story but slowly you know in hindsight when we see that okay because that person said this i was able to do that or i was able to be more than i was before then slowly we start understanding we start receiving things with more openness and we would accept that and you know that would Yeah, that can help us and somehow i don't know why i am reminding again of you know jetson bala you know she says that uh, it's like if somebody is being mean to you 
she says that you know you can actually say it inside don't say it outside but oh you know it's so lovely that you are so horrible you know that's teaching me so much so just and that changes right that changes the dynamics of my life my attitude we were you know reading about it yesterday when we were doing the book study of looking within that my attitude the same situation my attitude decides what will be the outcome if i'll just end up picking more things or i'll be able to do better yeah thank, thank you. you for asking that and, and you know just a very small i'm sorry i'm just speaking and speaking and this one more important thing that comes to me is that if i am pointing out somebody else's mistake or when i am telling somebody oh you don't do this right and stuff i must also stand with you know compassion and love as my center that i am telling this because i love the person and i want the best for them and because usually when i am telling i too take a position right that okay i know they don't know so when i say this from that point usually it's received very not very well but if i truly say it from the center of you know oh i didn't know this somebody else told me let me share and we are at the same place right standing on the same ground then also the same thing because you know it hurts us when somebody says or suggests or implies something when i am saying the same thing if i can first take a minute and ground myself and share that that also i feel would have the capacity to change our relationships and our comments yeah. thank you so much ritu yeah ritu i think you had unmuted uh then the jagran if you wanted to share something yeah yeah so if you look at yourself what would you say about your cup the honestly i would say that there are so many things in my cup that i am not even aware of like my blindness to who i am or what i am and how much i am holding on to and from where it surprises me and it humbles me when i see something which i wasn't aware of you know somebody say talks about jealousy somebody talks about greed and when i'm hearing something you know there will be a underlying commentary that you i don't do this i am not greedy or i am not jealous and then you know the next day something would happen and i'll catch a movement in me that oh she got this so oh, i wish i had gotten it too you know and oh right hey 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 you are you know wanting that so just these underlying movements they are so much there which i mean without much value i mean they create ill will and stuff but yeah sorry to answer your question yeah it's it's so full that surprising that i don't even know what all it's full of and because i don't even know the content so just you know whenever i'm reading something whenever say even before a lot of times when we meet for different things you know there's just a small prayer of aspiration that may i be able to transcend myself right may i be may my limits not stop me may i be able to see more then i already see because we stop seeing right like if i am going to say here a, i don't know a discourse on something by someone and if i already say that whatever i am doing that's the best i can do i will never be able to really grasp something things would remain at an entertainment level Okay, I'm saying this, but you know, I'm hearing this because oh, it's it's nice. Oh, he was so smart. Oh, he's so witty. That speaker is so clever. So it again would remain at the entertainment level. But if I actually want to make some changes towards simplicity in my life, I will have 
to be ready to drop the things that I am holding on to and know that I can do better than this. I can do better than this. Somebody says something, within a second a judgment comes, a comment comes. Underline, I might not even acknowledge it and I definitely won't say it. But it comes. Why? Who, who tells me that I know? Why do I feel I know? Or I what I know is the best? You know, this the, Kabir ji has such beautiful, beautiful, you know, dohas and songs on this. And that, what you, when you just asked that, there's this one, na, that, Jab main tha tab hari nahi, ab hari hai main nahi. A prem gali ati saakri, isme do na samaye. Jab main tha tab hari nahi, jab hari hai main nahi. You know, either the truth can live or I can live. And when I was so full of just me, 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 then truth had no place to live in me. But as soon as I moved aside that I don't know, then the truth, you know, came into me and I was able to live big. I was able to. So the road to the truth is very sakri. Sakri means very patli, right? Usme do nahi reh sakte hai. Ye nahi ho sakta ki mujhe apne tarike se, but main bhi hu, and truth be here because I am usually so full of just opinions like Jagan was saying and you know comments and like you were sharing history and my past that if I am occupied there I cannot see where my growth is how can I move lightly or how can I follow the truth or a life to a simpler existence and living if I'm already holding on to so much that doesn't add anything rather takes a lot from me right there was this uh i don't know if we have it that poster that was created right which just give me one yeah so you know Somehow this visual was felt like a cup and we hold our cup so nicely, right? It's my cup, it's my drink. But to look inside the drink and see that is this really something I want to hold on to? You know, we talk about life. We talk about where the world is going. We say that why is everybody like this? But everybody around me is like this or the world is going down because somewhere... I am also a part of it, right? So because I am also participating in that movement, nobody cares because I don't care. But I don't see that. And, you know, we make people, we make ministers, we make policy makers, we make people who are taking care of environment. So if I honestly don't care about it, but I want them to really be very strong about it, it doesn't work that way. So for anything to change, first I must change. So here, you know, it says that if I'm tired of my life, my old ways, I must empty my cup, my vessel. I must make room in and around me so that, you know, the new, the truth, the real, the big can surround me. So, Taru, when you say that your cup is also full of so many things, so when you see that, so how do you try and empty it? I mean, not yeah. seeing things, awareness, I mean, watching yourself, all these things. Yeah. So I will uh, invite more reflections that how should or how do we let go of things which we believe are limiting us or defining us. 
if anybody has anything to share on this, we can take up more reflections. Uh, I can, yeah. So for me, um, for me, the arrogance is followed by sadness. If it is something that is really intended for my benefit and I couldn't take it because it was against what I had, um, against my opinion that I made up already. So um, when that situation occurs, that is when uh, I sit and I reconcile, or maybe I don't reconcile, it just happens by itself on auto mode. And then I realize, so that's how it happens. So if anything, anybody tells me something, I'm upset. And then I confront them or I just walk away. And then I'm sad after that for days sometimes. That's when I reconcile and I try to uh, empty that part of my cup. Thank you, Shabam. For me, I think two two ways are have really helped me. The one, first one is whenever I get triggered by something, by circumstances, by person, this constant mantra in my heart that you know this is for my growth, this is for my progress, um, has really helped me um, in the most difficult situation, and it really creates a space of opening, of, of spacious, of the light to enter. I create, I try to at least create it, but it's not easy. Sometimes you definitely will react not. But the moment somebody says something, you know, I remember when my mother was going away, it was so hard, but I kept telling myself, this is for her and my progress. And even in the ICU, I kept chanting because the mind, if will, even if you give it a second, it will try to fill it up with panic, fear, with reaction, anger, ego. So do, I just try not not to had let it happen. Even if, you know, with my partner, with my colleague, you know, somewhere with even with my neighbor, something happens, I don't like it. I just immediately start saying it for five minutes. It's for my progress. It's for, for my progress. So, and it just passes away. If, if you don't hold it on, if you don't catch that vibration, those entities that come try to take hold in occult sciences, it say that it's the entities that try to make your body a host or a cartole would say it's the pain body that comes. They are not there. Let, not letting them take over me and just constantly saying, of course, there'll be times when we'll not be able to do it. But the more you do it, I think the better you, you become at it. So, and that really helps to kind of not letting my cup be filled with ego, with anger, with reactions and hurt and all of that. And the other thing I think is to keep evolving and learning, like, you know, um, learning different things, maybe pick up an instrument, different thing, knitting, it could be so many different things. And I think mother has spoken about it. And I was not at all like that because I am in academy as so always in front of a computer doing my things, reading, that's it. Uh, somebody would say, what are your hobbies? Hobbies, reading. But I say, I even work. I Working is also reading, hobbies also reading. So I just realized that, you know, how cultivating hobbies, gardening is a wonderful one, actually. Uh, learning a, a musical instrument, knitting, no matter if you're 50, 60, 20, doesn't really matter. And um, somebody actually asked the mother, said that, you know, how can we, can, how can we get rid of our smallness? And she says that, um, I'm quoting her, of course, not exactly what she said, but she said, by making yourself large, so simple. And she said, I remember my mother used to be so, like, so scared. And, and you know, my father used to be so distinct because I kept doing so many things when I was young. I was, I was doing art. I was doing playing tennis. I was doing music. I was not doing anything, one thing. And they thought, what's the problem? Mother even started speaking at a very late age when she was young. She said, and, you know, these things made me realize how small we are. How, me, like, how, how can you be caught in your meanness when there's so many things that has to be learned and the time is very less? And that thing really, I said, wow, that's so easy. It's a practical way, you know, to train your mind. And I actually realized that when I actually do different things, 
my brain is trained in a way that it only wants to learn learn new thing it doesn't want to hold on it actually says okay forget about this forget about the fight i have my piano class i have my gym you know i have this and that's i thought this is really practical so i think these two things one is really practical stuff you know learning different things and doing community work or whatever but engaging yourself in meaningful practices really help you learn and not hold on so i think that really helps me of course we all fail at times but yeah thank you nandini that was really helpful so how do i let go of the small by finding something bigger to hold right because hold i will you know how it said that you know we are very sticky by nature right we just want to stick to people situation thing places we feel find comfort in just grabbing stuff so if i have to grab you know let me grab the highest thing i can grab because usually what i'm holding on to is a bit sad like it's a bit self limiting and it just stops me from becoming the person i would want to become right like my history something in my past something that happened to me and a lot of times when people are sharing you know there's so much pain in what they went through and at times it's very surprising that when you ask them when this happened you know this tragedy or this thing they'll be like you know 12 years back or you know 25 years back or when i was a child you know my father said this and i cannot rise above it and one thing is sad that that hurt them so much and that's true right that's why they are holding on to and yet it's sad that we this i don't know the i of me is so big ki mujhe bol diya mere sath hua you know tomorrow i'll end up i don't know right in a body box or body bag or whatever it is my truth you know i am not here forever and then what is important to me you know lot of time people say that when we speak to people who are about to you know leave their body when they have disease especially elderly you know all their if they if they ever share it all like you know that you know love more think less you know it's all about just love that let go forgive life is too short and yet when i have the opportunity to live the life i keep holding on to small things knowing that you know this is not serving me this is actually the reason why i am stuck where i am so i stop myself you know it's like i am a wall around my own self and then i'm saying oh no you know life feels hard yeah jagah hi nahi hai you know i want to be free fly like that bird or that canadian geese that we see flying around with so much you know quack quack whatever but yeah like just for me to recognize that yes i am self limiting or holding myself down with the weight i am carrying you know what with what nanni what you shared it's very great because if i keep on emptying this so much and it keeps getting full again and again right because i spoke about the blindness right that i don't even know what all i'm holding on to so many times so what with what you shared it's like you just give up that cup and catch a get a new cup right something bigger something which has no place for that thing because that play that small thing would stay so i can say yes yes you stay but i'll come back to you i'll come back to you, you know the ego is lashing up mujhe bol diya mujhe bol diya so okay okay first i have to take care of this and by the time you get to that back to that it usually solves so holding on to the big because the small doesn't matter i'm reminded of meera right like so much was said to her so much so many adjectives and so many things and yet she was so much into her krishna that what the others were saying not didn't really matter 
because she had something bigger to hold on to to love yeah so it's uh 9:30 and uh, i just had one small sharing from what i had read from you know uh, shri aurobindo and mother one small paragraph but if anybody has to leave it's past one hour please feel free to leave we will just take 3 to 4 minutes more and of course if if there is any sharing it's very welcome no sorry thank you yeah if anybody is willing if they could just read this one i really like it if and i wanted to share it yeah i'll do that okay thank you keep the quiet and do not mind if it is for a, a time empty keep the quiet and do not mind if it is for a time empty basically they are talking about emptiness you know lot of times yeah. emptiness hurts us right we feel ki are ye kya ho raha hai right i'm so used to so much movement up and down in me that mm. if i find myself in a space which is empty suddenly silent i'm i'm boggled right ki kya karu is space ka so it's a little bit hinting to me like that's what happened during the covid time everybody was not finding things to run around exactly and that is why that time really helped a lot of people propel forward right because now there were no distractions yeah so please keep the quiet and do not mind if it is for a time empty the consciousness at times is like a vessel which has to be emptied of its mixed and undesirable contents it has to be kept vacant for a while till it can be filled with the right contents the one thing to be avoided is a refilling of the cup with the old contents meanwhile wait open yourself upwards call very quietly and steadily not with a too restless eagerness for the peace to come into the silence and once the peace is there for the joy and the presence yes thank you so i think what was very important was that firstly knowing that most of the times the cup is filled with undesirable contents right we know we would we can say we don't but we know what's holding us back we know that there's some negativity some opinions of judgments that we are holding on to images so if we are able to move step back from that it feels empty and lot of times you know we feel we are in toxic relationships or other stuff like that but because emptiness feels like it's it's you know it's biting me it's eating me up so it feels that okay something is better than nothing but you know here this that avoid refilling the cup with the old content i feel is really important because we so desperately do not want to be empty or alone that we just say you know kuch to kuch bhi dal do kuch to dal do that uh, you know every when you were reading i was reminded of that song which you know pal bhar ke liye koi hame pyar to kare jhootha hi sahi i is like you know we are okay with the falls but right now it hurts me so i don't want to stay with that feeling of emptiness that feeling of hurt but and then if somebody does and they kind of you know you realize that that was not true then you will be the one crying again ki are are pyar bhi kiya aur dhoka bhi de diya right like not knowing that i myself was had asked for that so we are pretty silly at times or most of the times if i can say yeah yeah this also answered something i raised in the beginning so i am happy that i just also got an answer about 
not filling it with not not less meaningful things you know let it be empty if it needs to be yeah and then what you shared na lot of times we have to keep doing something till we cannot do it any longer right and one has to be kind to oneself right that if you're feeling the urge to be with certain people because they are satisfying certain things right they are making you feel love you know you're talking about your partner's family they make you feel you know looked after and yet you feel you don't like it when you are there so you know how we say that we are not one we are many right there's so many of me living in me somebody wants this somebody wants that so there will be a time when you will be no longer able to entertain the idea of going there because what you have to pay is too big compared to what you have to get but till you're getting something if you're feeling that warmth and love in that you know i think it's okay to go because when you can't do it any longer that it happens naturally and gradually too right so that too is okay Yeah, any Ma'am, in that paragraph, yeah, can you show us the last two sentences one more time? Yes. Yeah, so it says, you know, meanwhile, wait, open yourself upwards, call very quietly and steadily. Okay, so here it starts, not with a, okay, not with a too restless eagerness for the peace to come into the silence. and once the piece is there for the joy and presence ma'am can you explain the the sentence where it starts from not with a too restless eagerness yeah so uh, you know how we were discussing that lot of times space or emptiness or silence or loneliness you know it really troubles us right and we are so eager to just find company we are not even seeing what we are going for or if i am going with this group of friends and all what does that mean where is that company taking me or how do i feel when i am there i am just so restless to see feel full or that i am loved or that i have company that i don't even see the nature of what i am holding on to so here it is being said that don't be too restless be okay with the emptiness be okay with the silences the spaces and you know it's like if there's a cup and it says i don't like to be empty right it just needs to be full 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 so even if it's full of drain water it's happier than when it's empty then that's something wrong with the cup right why is emptiness so problematic why does it make me feel that oh my god what is happening how come it's empty how come it's empty so being okay with the silence being okay with the spaces being okay with i don't know you know ye humse bola nahi jata koi kuch bhi poochta i have to have an opinion about every bit everything aur agar mujhe pata nahi i'll make up things right that must be that this is my best guess this is what i think it is but what what's wrong with i really don't know so just that restlessness that comes that kuch to bol do kuch to kar do koi to ho kisi ka to haath pak lo and not see and then after 2 years 3 years or 2 months it's like oh my god how did i reach here right so if we are again just a bit more conscious a bit more honest mindful we won't be able to hold on to things which are not serving any purpose which are just taking us into the petty the small rather than our possibilities which are remains you know monica sometimes you know speaks about udasin udasi udasin ta yeah yeah ud a seen so basically uh, the sanskrit derivation is a higher place ki a seen as in sitting ud matlab upar ki we take udasi ya udasinta as a negative trait but according to the upanishad that's a very higher state because now there is 
you know this interestedness or this enchantment that you know when a child he is given toys with you know those sounds and bells and whistles and lights like the way he looks at them that oh my god where am i right but slowly 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 when i have seen enough we see the illusionary nature that all that glitter is not gold so then i step back and i am disenchanted with the world with what it's offering me or with the little toys that i am holding on to when i realize and, and i think this is what mostly mid life crisis are all about right ki we've been running 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 thinking that this will bring me peace this will bring me contentment this will bring me happiness and we reach a point that oh my god you know i'm 40 i'm 45 i'm 50 and still it feels it's a carrot on the stick so then one sits and then either one goes inside or one goes out and buys you know a green sports car with where the doors open upward which seems to fill it says it promises that that will give me something and it never does it never does so in vedantic thing udasinta is considered a really high place to sit now that now that i have seen let me step back and see how the leela is working so the maya is now leela ke okay, i see it's a play so thank you so much for all these questions for your time for joining in any last comments from anybody before we end uh, welcome you know um, attending sessions like these one feels oh god what am i doing what why am i so stuck with all these choti choti cheeze why can't i move on but after a while again you jump into the same mud and muck so i don't know when this thing is going to improve <laughs> you know i will keep getting stuck till a day comes when i don't right but at least this want this aspiration this prayer that oh let me not get stuck again and again it carries a value right it mm-hmm. it will definitely it's another small st- step forward another mm-hmm. step forward yeah. yeah but then reminders like these you know just sitting and discussing these or thinking about this is i think must be making some difference somewhere sometimes some, it just creeps up from somewhere if you heard about something recently yeah yeah definitely and you know that's why i think buddha he had said right that sangha hmm like dharam dharma sangha and i don't know what was the third thing maybe nandini But- mam sharanam gachami buddham sharanam gachami and sangam sharanam gachami hmm. so sangam you know that that sangha is really important and i remember there was a story when you know his disciple or and best is his friend anand you know he had asked him that you know company really matters right like it really company is a lot it plays a lot of role in where we are going what we are doing how we are living and buddha said no anand it doesn't play a big role it is everything your company is what you will become and company is not just people it's your thoughts it's what you are exposing yourself to what news you are reading what places you are visiting that is what is accompanying me so you become that um yeah. in um tenson jetson mas uh, talk when she says about the negative thoughts as weeds so we have to keep weeding them out because mm-hmm. when we let them grow when we feed them then even the good thoughts don't get enough nourishment because the weeds grow faster than the good plants so be cautious about what you are thinking what you are nurturing yeah great example thank you for that reminder yeah very apt to the discussion today mm. quote i really like by mother which i thought would be very good for the session 
uh, I read it personally like it. He says, a generous heart always forgets the past offenses and is ready to reestablish harmony. That's beautiful. Please do share it on the WhatsApp group as well. Mm. So we'll end the session here. We might take up the same topic. We'll see next time or new one. Emptying my cup. So just taking one minute, you know, before we end, just to thank the universe, the grace, the cosmos for the opportunity to have such sessions in which one can see or challenge one's limits, beliefs, thought patterns. So that I can be more. So that everybody can be more. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, you Jagan. Yes, Ahima, I will message you the WhatsApp link and uh, you can join. So thank you for coming in today and hope to see you again. Bye. So we have to talk quickly. We have to stop the recording.